Hi everyone, we are the last group, the group 8, and our topic is the physical and cognitive development in late adulthood and death. I am Queen Alexa Prendas and I am the first presenter. So what is ageism? So ageism is a prejudice or discrimination against a person, most commonly an older person based on their age. So example, Anika, a treating family member, though they are invisible and intelligence or expandable based sa ilang edad. Conceptualizing of aging. So primary aging. So primary aging is a gradual inevitable process of bodily deterioration throughout of the lifespan. So this is the normal aging that occurs with time and irreversible. It includes the physiological, genetic, and molecular changes such as um, a decline in vision and hearing and a decrease in resistant infection. While um, secondary aging, this is caused by the I, this is caused by il illness, health habits like mag smoke ka, you know, and other individual differences. It can be potentially reversible, like. So functional age. So functional age is a measure of a person a person's ability to function effectively in their physical and social environment in comparison with others of the same chronological age. So, best example sa functional age kay kanang at the age of 58 daw kuno kanang di na sila kadagan og 20 20 miles. So, gerontology so gerontology is the study of the age and aging processes. So, the purpose sa mga sa gerontology is to improve its quality by minimizing the impact of age related disease and condition. And geatrics is the branch of medicine concerned with process of aging and medical condition associated with old ages. So, when we say um, geatrics, geatrics is a medical specialty focus on care and treatment of older person. So, life expectancy. So, life expectancy is the age to which a person born to a certain time and place is statistically likely to live given their current age and health status. So life ex expectancy is based on the average of longevity or actual length of life of a member. So the human lifespan is the longest period that members of our spe species can live. So the maximum age of a person can practically to live to. For humans, the lifespan is currently estimated between 120 and 125 years. So reserve capacity aging. So reserve capacity aging is ability ability of body organs and system to put forth four to ten times as much as effort effort as usual under acute stress also called as organ reserve next is cataract so cloudy a uh, cloudy or opaque areas in the lens of the eye which cause nga mahanap atong mata mo na cataracts next is age related muscular de degeneration so condition in which the center of the retina gradually lose its ability to dis discern fine details leading cause an irreversible visual impairment in, ad in older adults. Next is glau glaucoma. So, irreversible damage of the optic nerve caused by increased pressure sa mata. Next is the AD con, the activities of daily living of the instrumental day activities of daily living. So, when we say activities of daily living, it's essential activities that support survival such as eating, dressing, bathing, or getting around in the house. Well, kung ano kanya siya, kanong, uh, ang EDL kay basic physical ta tasks that are necessary, necessarily nga makasurvive ito. More na. And next is the instrumental activities of daily living or IADLS. So more complex tasks that allow people to live independently in their community such as managing finance, 
cooking and laundry like independent sila like kaya ni nako so next is the mental and behavioral problems so dementia Dementia is deterioration in cognitive and behavioral functioning due to physiological causes. So, dementia is a general term for a decline in a mental abilities that affects a person's ability to perform daily activities. Like, ma memory loss sila, nga maglibog, anang maglisud sila o storya, or magkuan sa language nila o pagsabot. Mo na like mga kanang symptoms of oh, kaba kung adagan pa symptoms guys like so alzheimer disease is a progressive irre irreversible de degenerative brain disorder characteristic characterized by cognit cognitive deterioration and loss of control of bodily function leading to the so alzheimer disease is a brain disorder that slowly nga will destroy atong memory thinking skills and eventually nga a bit nga dili na to kaya Dili na to, dili kaya nila nga mo kuan carry out bisag simple lang atas. And mao ni ang kanang brain sa kuan na ay Alzheimer disease. As you can see. So neurofibrillary tangles or tangles along twisted masses of protein fibers found in brain persons sa mga na ay Alzheimer disease. Next is the amplified plate. So waxes chunk of insoluble tissue found in brain of a person's Alzheimer's disease. So what is the difference between the neurofibrillary tangles or amplate plate? So amplate plate is which are found in the tissue between the nerve cell are unusual clumps of a protein called beta amyloid along with degenerating bits of neuron and the other cell. Well the tangles are bundles that twisted in the inflammations found in the neurons. So this tangle is largely made up uh, are largely made up of protein of tau cognitive reserve is hypnotized found of energy that may able to deteriorating brain to continue to function normally so cognitive reserve is like the ability to withstand damage and continue to function well even when faced with increasing challenges so you can think of a uh, cognitive reserve as your brain ability to improvise and find alternate ways of getting a job done. So ego integrity versus despair is the final stage in Eric Erikson's theory of psychosocial development, on which it outlines the psychological challenges individuals face across their lifespan. But in this stage, it typically occurs during late adulthood, so around age 65 and older. So we have to break down first what is ego integrity. So ego integrity is when older adults reflect on their past life and feel a sense of fulfillment and satisfaction. So in this case, they accept their past, they acknowledge their accomplishments or their achievements and they are at peace of the life that they have lived so the outcome of this stage if the older adult has the ego integrity they might feel content and maybe they will have a sense of closure since they can face the end of life with dignity and without a significant regret so what's the life pagmahay they don't think na sila pagkuwang sa ilang life na yan live. On the other hand, this period stage, it talks about when the older adult looks back on their life and feel regret, satisfaction, or even a sense of failure. So they may dwell on missed opportunities, past mistakes, or even unresolved issue. And in this case, if it happens that the older adult may feel that way, of course, mga feel sila bitterness or even hopelessness. And this might lead also as well in the sense of incompleteness. They might feel that something ko ang nabuhat before. And they might fear death as well. Tungod sa unresolved na grief. 
and again because of the sense of incompleteness so the key concept of this final stage is that when an individual is coming to terms with one's life and accepting it as a unique and valuable journey so successfully navigating this stage results in a sense of peace while on the other hand failure may lead to feelings of regret and bitterness. So since we're done talking about ego integrity versus despair, we need to talk now about coping and mental health. So as you can read in the PowerPoint, coping is adaptive thinking or behavior aimed at reducing or relieving stress that arises from harmful, threatening, or challenging situations or conditions. So coping though, it refers to the strategies and behaviors that individuals may do to use to manage stress, difficult emotions, or challenging situations. And we have here three examples of it. First one is cognitive appraisal model, problem-focused coping, and the third one is emotion-focused coping. So, let's start first with the cognitive appraisal model. Let's move on to the next page. Okay, so according to this model, it's, it is how a person perceives or appraises. A stressor determines their emotional and behavioral response to it. So, it's more like looking at the stressor of the situation instead of solving the problem. But actually, this type of model includes two steps. We have the primary appraisal and the secondary appraisal. So let's start with primary appraisal or the first step. So this is the initial evolution of a situation to determine its significance. So in this case, nagfocus siya na ang tawad ring a face, nagtimagtimang siya whether the event or situation is re relevant, relevant ba, positive or stressful. In this case, you might ask yourself, like, importante ba niya, worth it ba niya sa time, and if ako ba niya siyang assess, does it make me grow, or does it only, um, does it only results into a stressful situation? So, yung mo siyang i-view, yung mo lang siyang ka nang logically think, if worth it ba siya sa mong oras, that's the primary appraisal. As you can see in the secondary appraisal, after you have um, assessed the situa situation first, you will think about your available resources, skills, and strategies to manage the situation. So in this case, if you decide na ka na, let's say, worth it some oras, you want to solve this, you might ask yourself like, can I handle this? Or, unsa kong buhaton para makadil ko ano nga situation? Like that. So, when we say secondary appraisal, we now consider the other two examples, which is the problem focused coping or the emotion focused coping. Because in the primary appraisal, imong focus ani is think ka nga. Do you want to deal with the situation or not? worth CSA mong oras or delay. So, let's move on to problem-focused coping and emotional-focused coping. And you might see or might realize on sa kind of type of person on how you deal stressful situation. So, let's move on to the next page. So, we see here that problem-focused coping involves the use of instrumental or action-oriented strategies to eliminate, manage, or improve a stressful condition. So, from the word problem-focused, it seems like you want to solve the problem itself. And in this case, the goal is to solve the problem, manage the st stressor, or find ways to alter the situation. So, we have example here. Creating a plan to manage workload more efficiently. We have seeking additional information or advice and taking direct actions like having a conversation to resolve the issue. So let's not forget now focus a problem focused coping is you want to deal or to solve the problem itself. 
And let's move on to emotion focused coping. We already have an idea, Asinisha. So it involves managing the emotional response to a stressful situation rather than changing the stress itself. This means that instead of solving the problem itself, you're focusing on how you reduce emotional distress on yourself and how to improve your emotional well-being. Sorry. So, the goal ani is to manage feelings, minimize discomfort, and maintain emotional stability. As you can see the examples here, practicing relaxation, talking to friends or family for support, or even reframing situation in a positive light, or engaging in activities for a temporary distraction or cool off. So since we know the difference now between problem-focused coping and motion-focused coping, we can see that problem-focused coping is much more generally more effective for situations na nani mo ang control ba? Like, you have the control of the situation, like, makontrol mo siya. Emotion-focused coping is more suitable if the stressor is out of your control. So, mga butang natin mo makontrol. It's best to, rather than solving the problem itself, you might try to minimize the discomfort in yourself or looking for ways for your emotional stability. So, that's the three examples of coping mechanisms. Let's now move on to our next topic. Let's talk about ambiguous loss. When we say ambiguous, it's something that is spontaneous, wala ni mo na perceive ang may tabo di ay. So this is type of loss that lacks clear resolution or closure. So making it uniquely challenging, magisud ka og cope ani. And this type of loss can also complicate the process of coping because again it involves uncertainty and unresolved grief. So we have two simple examples of ambiguous loss. First one is physical absence with psychological presence. So physical absence, this means death, pero nagyapon presence psychologically. Example is a loved one who is missing due to war or natural disasters. Second example is psychological absence with physical presence. So probably wala na may connection aning a person, but buhi siya. Example ani is someone with dementia, severe mental illness, a heartbreak, or addiction. This could also apply to animals if you are going through something na matay mong animal. That could be a good example as well. So that's the two simple example of ambiguous loss. It's very simple. Tamagdugay. Let's move on to the next topic already.
Alright, so let's talk about the models of the successful aging. When we say models of successful aging, it's the different approaches on which we can decide na kanya siyang way is I think mas better siya if tiwang na ta, nga na. So we have here four examples, four different approaches to successful aging. But again, these are theories. They're not proven in fact. So, they offer different perspectives on how older adults can achieve well-being and satisfaction in later stages in life. So, let's read first, Disengagement Theory. This is when older people naturally withdraw from social roles, relationships, and activities. So, in this theory, it tells them that it's a necessary part of aging, which provides them, of course, the space to reflect for death and reduce social pressure. So, the benefits ane is that um, it might help them come to terms with aging and reality of physical and mental decline. Because of course, when you age, nam decline of your body functioning, ba? So, this also allows all the adults again to conserve energy and focus on their own inner lives and past experiences. From the word disengagement, disengage sa social interactions. And for the second one, activity theory. So this is quite the opposite of disengagement theory. So this suggests that staying active, engaged, and socially involved in physical or even intellectual activities contributes to higher levels of lives of satisfaction and even successful in aging. So the core idea of this theory, activity theory, is that they argue that maintaining roles and participating in activities, even adapting to new ones, helps individuals sustain a positive self-concept and overall well-being. So in this, in this theory though, Ang mga older people, they don't stay stagnant, di ba? Mostly at tumagit ang older people, they just kanang stay sa home, di na kayo magawas-gawas, you know, participate socially. But activity, activity theory says that older people can still have, find new hobbies, active gap mo sa sana life ba? It could be physically baron, mentally baron, or even socially. Which is, rare kayo na tumakita. Dili kay active among older people karon. So that's the second example that is activity theory. We have here similar sa activity theory we have continuity theory. So it speaks for itself in the word continuity. It emphasizes that as people age, they strive to maintain a consistent lifestyle, behavior and identity over time. So this is by continuing or holding on with their previous habits, preferences, values, and social relationships to that extent that these remain meaningful and feasible. So in this case, kung sa ilang ibot before or silang hobby before, it don't really change. It doesn't really change. They stay. Uh, sorry. They're still consistent with it. Kung sa ilang ibot before. So this provides a middle ground between disengagement and activity theory. So in this case of continu continuity theory, the older adults in this theory tend to hold on to their familiar activities, roles, and relationships that have been central to their identity. So for example lang, again since as we age, our body function declines. Let's say there's an individual who is an avid runner. They can still be consistent with their hobby, pero since weak naman ang lawas physically, they might shift to walking or swimming or just um, mga low type of activity na lang as they age. But it's still important because it is a consistent sense of self, values, and personality traits that will remain stable over time. Aside from that, from external perspective, it involves maintaining relationship, roles, and environments that will provide familiarity and stability. 
So all in all, in these three examples, na the last one, unlike disengagement theory, it actually emphasizes withdrawal from society. Activity theory, on the other hand, it promotes high levels of engagement even in old age. And continuity theory, it's a theory that recognizes the maintaining balance between change and consistency. They believe maintaining balance between change and consistency. They believe that change and consistency is essential for successful aging. So it respects that some people prefer to remain highly active while others may engage selectively in activities that resonate with their past. So in the continuity theory, when we say sense of self, example one is when there is an elderly person who enjoyed teaching. So they might still volunteer as a mentor or tutor that means that they're maintaining their sense of purpose and continuity in their role as an educator. So they have been doing something that they have been doing past in their life up until the age because it has become the central of their identity as a self. So let's move on to the fourth one. Sorry, this is selective optimization with compensation, SOC. So, SOC is a theory that explains how people adapt to changes and challenges across the lifespan. You can see it on the PowerPoint. SOC actually has a model, actually model that we propose, which provides a framework for understanding successful aging by highlighting adaptive strategies that help individuals maintain functioning and well-being as they grow older. So, this actually has three steps. Yeah. So, we have selection, optimization, and compensation. So, when we say selection, this is when they refer or they choose a particular goal which they prioritize. They focus on it because for them, it's the most meaningful or achievable giving in one's resources and constraints. So it still depends on the resources of an individual. That is selection. Let's go to optimization. So this one involves investing time and resources to maximize performance to achieve the goal better. So or the selective activities or goals. So this includes practicing skills seeking assistance or even depending on tools and technology to enhance the performance and we have the third one which is compensation so this refers to finding alternative methods so lain substitute the methods or resources to maintain functioning when faced with challenges or loss so for the selection we have an example so an older adult who enjoyed competitive sports in youth so, pagkabatan ang nila. When they age, they may shift their focus to low-impact physical activities. So, again, low-impact activities. This might be swimming or walking as their primary way to stay active. Muna lang buhatan to stay active. So, it's kind of like continuity theory. Let's move on to optimization. We have an example. So, this is when an individual might invest time in learning new technology to keep in touch with family and friends or to maintain cognitive health through stimulating activities. And we have compensation. So, again, compensation is a method, alternative methods that is faced when challenges or losses. Example here is when a senior experiences hearing loss might use hearing aids or rely more on visual cues during conversations to maintain communication. So all in all, these four sorry, we got we got cut off. All in all, these four examples or models of successful aging provides say plan or preference kung sa way 
on how to define successful aging but still since we have individual differences it is best to serve that we have different interests and capacity whether that involves social physical or intellectual pursuits it still depends on the individual itself or how they define successful aging so we're done of four models of successful aging let's move on to my last topic next ani is abl na ang report so since we're talking about old age here of course eventually we're going to talk about death as well or the end of life so we have here thanatology it's a study of death and dying that provides foundational knowledge that informs hospice and palliative care practices. So, thanatology encompasses the explore, exploration of psychological, social, cultural, and biological aspects of death. So, it seeks to understand how individuals or how people and societies perceive or cope with deaths. If no conference of death. So, thanatology has two examples under it. We have here hospice care and palliative care. So professional strain in thanatology may work on various fields, again such as hospice and palliative care, because it can help guide people through death-related experiences with a deeper understanding of physical, emotional, and cultural elements. So to understand better the thanatology, Let's talk first about palliative care. So palliative care is a specialized form of medical care that aims to relieve symptoms, pain, and stress associated with serious illnesses regardless of the stage or prognostic and can be part of long-term care plans. So palliative care is a medical care. So, ang goal sa palliative care is to improve the overall quality of life for patients and their families by addressing their physical, emotional, and spiritual needs. When we say palliative care, this one is applicable for long-term plans. Example, ani, mako, is when a patient is facing cancer. So, since cancer is a long-term illness, they might apply for palliative care. So since it's a medical care, this palliative care actually assess or have services such as psychological support, symptom management, assistance with treatment decisions, and even coordination of care among providers. On the other hand, we have hospice care. So hospice care here, talks about the type of palliative care specifically for patients who are nearing the end of life. So opposite siya sa palliative care, palliative care is good for long-term care plans. On the other hand, hospice care is for patients na kanang ang life expectancy ba is less than 6 months ba? or ang life in the hospital is only supported by a machine. So in this case, hospice care is not actually a medical care. It's more like supporting the emotional well-being of the families during the final stages life of the patient. So hospice care is typically offered if again there is no curative treatment na, na cure, and again if the life expectancy is less than six months. So the goal of hospice care is to provide comfort and dignity of terminally ill, Ill, sorry, Ill patients and support their families during the final stages of life. So the difference between hospice care and palliative care is that palliative care is a medical care. So mo support sila on medical aspect of the patient. On the other hand, hospice care since the patient here, in this case, is near the end of life. It only provides comfort and understanding, especially support for the family of the patient. So again, palliative care 
focuses on improving quality of life for patients at any stage of a serious illnesses. And hospice care is more specifically centers on providing comfort and emotional support during the final stages of life and extend its care model to include bereavement support. So that it, that's it guys for my topic. So the number report Casey Abriel. Good afternoon everyone. So my name is Abriel Mi M. Kahiwat and now let's proceed to my topic. So factors in preceding death. So we have terminal drop. A frequently observed decline in cognitive abilities near the end of life also called terminal decline. So here sa terminal drop or terminal decline, ang cognitive abilities sa usa ka tao, like for example, ang ilang thinking memory is magmalfunction, which is halimbawa ang usa ka tao magkamay na ana siya sakit sa utok or like sakit sa mga lawas, like for example, in brain kanang magkamay na siya dementia, Alzheimer, ing ana. Next, near-death experience. So, some people who have come close to dying report near-death experience, or NDE, often involve a sense of being out of the body or sucked into a tunnel and visions of bright lights or mystical encounters. So, di ba, like, makanood tag mga videos sa YouTube or Facebook, like, Ang usa ka tawo daw is mag 50-50 siya. Mura daw makita siya og kuno ganing red light tapos i-guide daw siya ano or ang other makakita og angel. Tapos ang uban is murag kana ganing ang imuhang kanang adventure sa life is mag flashback daw for 7 minutes ing ana then na ay kanang dream reaper na musundo sa imuha like in ana pero wala pa man sila na matay jud so matawag lang na near death experience ambot lang if tinuod to kay wala pa man nato siya natay next so we have the five stages of grief so the five stages of grief are the first one is the denial this can be happening to me like halimbawa Dili ka mo tuo, dili jud ka mo tuo, or bisag tinuod na ako sa kapagay, is dili siya ni mo tuuhan. Kay para sa imo ha, dili ni mo madawat in ana. Next is anger. Why me? Like, nga no sa ako pa man hitabo, nga man dili man sa lain. Nang namay lain nga, pati o patasan is sa ako, ah, like that. Next is bargaining for extra time. Like, for example, like, you didn't live your life to the fullest. Like, feeling ni mo, kulang pa ang imuhang pinapuhi. So, moingon ka na, Tani, nag-spend good time, ka nang together sa iyaha, auntie siya namatay. Like, mo nangaray sa magbasol ka ba? Because, like, wala ni mo nasulit ang oras. Next is depression. So, ma-depress ka kaayo, kay dili ni mo madawat, like, sad ka kaayo, lugmok kaayo ang imuhang life. Like, for example, dili jud ni mo kaayo madawat. Next is acceptance. So, after sa depression, di ba natay kasabihan na, there is a rainbow after rain. So, wala naman jud day mabuhat. Dili naman nato mabalik ang usa ka tao sa pagpatuloy nato na grieve. So, we all need to accept na it happened na and life must goes on bisag wala na sila. And we need to live bisag wala na sila. So, let's just accept the fact na wala na jit sila. So, now let's go on to patterns of grieving. So, the death of loved one is a difficult thing. First, there is a grief or the emotional response that generally follows closely on the heels of death. This is followed by bereavement. So, bereavement is a response to the loss of someone to whom a person feels close. But bereavement is not just an event, but it is not just grief. It is also a process of adjustment. So, diba, mag-grief ang usang katawo. 
like malugmok jud ka kaayo kay namatay ang important person sa imuhang life like ano feeling ni mo mamatay na pud ka kay tungod nga di ni mo kaya nga wa ang usa ka tawo so ara na mo sunod si bereavement so si bereavement mo ni siyang work response ni mo like namasud po diri ang five stages of grief which is katong denial anger mauna then ang kani siyang bereavement is process paano ka mag-adjust or mag-adapt na wala na ako sa katao sa imong kinabuhi like for example like na sanay ka na every morning pag gawas nimo imo papa is ma- naanay ka na food na nakahain sa table because your papa is a great cook then one day wala na because chimper wala naman siya in our world so like paano ka mag-adjust like chimper mag say ka na oh pag mulusad ko ani na time kay naanay ano breakfast na nakaano sa la mesa pero need ni mo mag-adjust kay chimper dili man all throughout the time or all throughout sa imong kinabuhi is na ay mo service imo breakfast labi ni imong papa since wala na ang imong papa so muna siya ang grief ug ang bereavement grief work so grief work is working out of psychological issues connected with grief so here in grief work like for example you'll find other activities or sa imong leisure time like Pag find ka activities na maka-entertain sa imong ha, para like, na-revert imong attention into other things, para dili ka na mag-grief kaayo. Para dili ka na magsigig cry, dili ka na magkulong sa imong kwarto. So, muni siya ang gitawag natin na grief work. Next is the classic grief work model. So, natin tulo na model sa grief work. So, the first one, is shock and disbelief. So, immediately following a death, survivors often feel lost and confused. As aware of the loss sinks in, the initial numbness gives way to overwhelming feelings of sadness and frequent crying. This first stage may last several weeks, especially after a sudden or unexpected death. So, here in shock and disbelief, like, na shock jud ka sa panghitabuan, I, ano, dili ka katuo nga namatay na ang usa ka person especially if that person died through an accident or through an heart attack through a heart attack like masyak ka tas dili pa masink in sa imong utok nga patay na ang certain person na ana nga important sa imo ha then mura kag magnumb then after maano ang numb ana sa imong lawas dira na nimo ma realize like ma feel na nimo ang pain then dira na ka mag start og cry na maglast siya og several weeks og several months like muni siya ang if like if ever natay sugat for example muni siya ang murag fresh stage sa atong sugat next is preoccupation with the memory of the dead person So, in the second stage, which may last six months to two years or so, the survivor tries to come terms with the death but cannot accept it. This experience diminishes with time, though they may recur perhaps for years. So, here in this stage is, Dili gihapon matanggap sa person na naiwan sa katong namatay, na namatay na ang kanya ka person. Like, dili gihapon masink in sa iyang utak or dili kaya i-accept sa iyang heart that that important person in his or her life had died na. So, sige lang gihapon siya, cry. Next is the resolution. So, the final stage has arrived when the bereaved person renews interest in everyday activities. Memories of the dead person bring fond feelings mingled with sadness rather than sharp pain and longing. So here's a resolution is medyo naka-move on ka na and then like nakanay tungod sa mga laing activities na imuhang na himo everyday medyo nakalimot na ka about ana nga person pero wag ihapon nimo siya malimutan like you will still remember her or him like for example mag-usa ka lang pero 
sadness na lang inyong ma-feel, nasakit kaayo, then inyong mga memories together with that person, katong nabuhi pa siya ano na kalibutan. So, there are significant losses. Una ay surviving a spouse. So, according to United States, una daw mamatay ang babae, oh, no, una mamatay ang lalaki kasi sa babae. Because men tend to marry younger women. So, mauna, una mabyuda ang girl kasi sa boy. Because una man daw mamatay ang lalaki kasi sa babae. Next is, losing a parent in adulthood. So, like, muni siya ang mamatay ang imuhang parents. Kung siyempre, sakit ni sa atua. Pero na ay times na na ay, di ba, mga family conflict. Ang uban is, parang dili na gudilos sa ilaha since naghabol sila sa mga kayamanan. Next is, losing a child. So, we all know that, daghang musulti na, masakit maglubong og anak dan mag held og funeral sa parents so ang parents ana is ma depress sila kaayo then malugmok na sila na it leads to medications na and pasig malala it and mamatay pa sila next is mourning a miscarriage so in other countries miscarriage is legalized so dili sila kaayo magmourn because it's their choice to abort the baby but here in the Philippines is ano siya, like, di ba, atong religion is against sa abortion. So, if ever, mamiscarriage na child, bisag fetus pa na siya, is naan na siya life. So, ato dyan siyang imorn, idamdam, na ang kanang baby na unborn, what if na, nabuhi sa kin sa atong kalibutan? So, it must be a very joyful happening in our life if ever nakasurvive to ang baby and naluwal siya here sa atong kalibutan. So now let's go to hastening death. So the first one is euthanasia. Euthanasia means good death and is intended to end suffering or to allow a terminally ill person to die with dignity. People differ in their beliefs about this process and some draw distinctions between the types of euthanasia used. So here in euthanasia, diba, means good death. So if ever ang usaka person is nag-suffer na dyan siya kaayo, like for example, you have a like terminal cancer na dyan, like stage 4, super lala na. So instead of mag-suffer ka pa through medications or whatever, mas piliin na lang nyo na mamatay kay, diba, ino nila na. Death is like freedom para sa naay mga sakit because they can feel pain anymore. Next is passive euthanasia. So, it involves withholding or discontinuing treatment that might extend the life of a terminally ill patient such as medication, life support systems, or feeding tubes. So, here in this case, like for example, you have a family or relatives or like alkaila lang na, for example, is nagkakomatos. So, di ba, if nagkakomatos sila, ilan life depends on the machineries and feeding tubes. Kaya dili man sila kakaon if ever nakomatos sila. Because, of course, they, they're asleep. So, ang family mag-decide if ilan na labang itigil ang medication sa asaka patient. Like, for example, na may mga factors that that can affect the decisions of the family. For example, ang medical expenses nila, like super taas na ang ilang medical expenses towards that person, then wala sila nakakita og improvement. So, their choice is to stop and discontinue the treatment. So, that's possible with Anasha. Next is active euthanasia or sometimes called mercy killing. By the way, ang passive euthanasia is legal siya. So, here in active euthanasia, it involves taking directly or deliberately to shorten a life, and it's generally illegal. So, in here is mag-take jud ka o mga drugs na harmful to your bodies. Like for example, mga gas like chlorophyll, emotion sinhoton para ma-shorten in your lifespan. Like, you want to kill yourself na. You want to die. So, next.
next is the advanced directive. So, documents specifying the type of care wanted by the maker in the event of an incapacitating or terminal illness. So, here in the word advance, nagplan ka na if paano ka ma-medicate and if when is stop ang imuhang medication. Like, for example, if you have enough funds, pwede ka mag-document. Like, for example, in this specific day, dapat ing-ani ko, ing-ani, ing-ani. Next is durable power of attorney. So, legal instrument that appoints an individual to make decisions in the event of another person's incapacitation. So, in this hastening death, mag-appoint ka of one person that you trust the most na if ever mulala na ang imuhang condition, he or she will dictate to the hospital na i-end na ba imuhang life or you will still continue the medication. Like siya ang may power na sa imuhang life, then it's legal because mayro ka na i-will. Like it's your last will na imong ipagkatiwala through that person. Next is assisted suicide. So, suicide in which a physician or someone else helps a person take their own life. So, in this, like, imong sabihan ng imong personal doctor na if you really wanna end your suffering, you just wanted to die. But it's illegal in some countries and also in other countries, they consider it as legal. Kaya it's their patient's choice man, not the, not the physician or the doctor's choice to kill their patients. And of course, through mercy, may himo na lang siya sa doctors because kaysa makita nila ang ilang pasyente na nagsakit pa. So next, let's go to life review. So life review is a process of reminiscence that enables a person to see the significance of their life. So, here in life review, like, kalimitan sa mag-life review is mga old person since sila ang dool na sa hukay. They, wa ano, like, they watch from photo albums, like pictures nila from bata pa sila, kauban ilang families, unforgettable moments in their life, they will reminisce it, then share nila sa mga young ones or to the younger generations, then if naaba sila'y like, na-achieve sa ilahang life, they will be happy if they achieve their dreams in their life. So, the more meaning and purpose people find in their lives, the less they tend to fear death. So, di rin na sila mahadlok mamatay because they know that they achieved already their, their goals in life. And they died. And they will die happy because they don't have any like, naiwan na na mga, like, mga visions in their life. Okay. Like, example, they have a bucket list. Then, in that bucket list, all the lists are checked. So, life review can help people prepare for death and give them a last chance to uncomplete and finish task. So, if ever they felt that, dili pa ano, napay kulang sa ilang life. Like, for example, even though you're old, you still want to do bungee jumping so you will try that or like for example maano ka you will feel joyful fulfillment and you will be happy even though late ka na ayang kabagay because wala may late para sa usa kabagay you will you will feel joy or you will feel happy if you ever do that particular thing that you really want and that you really want to accomplish so as I've done my report, because I'm finished talking about my report now, I just want to say that enjoy and live your life to the fullest and surround your environment with good people and people who love you. Don't surround yourselves with people who are full of hatred towards you. And just enjoy your life and also I hope that we can all achieve all our goals and dreams in our life. So thank you for listening to us and I hope that you gained some information and also acquire some motivational attitude. Thank you!